I'm really happy、uh, to have you here tonight, Felix.、Um, you're a really interesting person, and because of that, we choose you for this interview today.、Um, maybe we start just with a little, with a little description about yourself. What did you do? What did you study? And why are you here today?、Um, yes, yeah. Th- thank you very much for having me.、Um, Yes,、yeah, so a little bit about myself. I was born in Germany,、um, but then moved to the Netherlands so with the、um, age of nine.、Um, so then,、uh, until the end of、um, end of my school years, I was in the Netherlands、uh, near Amsterdam at the European School. So at、uh, quite a international environment already,、um, and、um, so I decided to study in the UK. And、uh, there, I started studying、uh, theoretical physics at the University of St Andrews in、uh, beautiful Scotland, up in the north.、Um, and yeah, we really enjoyed this. This was a, a great time. And、um, yeah, beyond、um, studying, there was there was lots to do as well. So really, the, the student community there was was amazing. And after that, you decided after your study, you decided you want to go into science, into physics. What did you do there exactly? Yes, yes. So actually, this is not、uh, not as easy. <laughs> so、um, I did uh, some uh, some research in,、uh, for my master thesis, and、um, I did this in、um, theoretical physics,、uh, and it was it was quite challenging. Uh, to, to be honest, and I had the feeling, oh, I'm not,、uh, I don't have really the right background yet, in a sense, and I didn't enjoy too much. So、uh, then I actually applied already then、uh, back then into、um, jobs in industry.、Um, so the usual big names、uh, for consultancies,、uh, McKinsey, BCG, and、uh, and Bain. And、uh, quickly realized that、um, at this、uh, point in time,、um, I, I wasn't ready yet. I, I was very young. I was 21 years old at that point、uh, when when I got the, got the masters, and I didn't really know what I wanted. In, you in were、life. 21 when you finished your master thesis. Yes, so it was、um, four、great. years of studying. I started when I was、um, 18.、Mm-hmm. Um, And then,、uh, no, so sorry, twenty-two. <laughs> twenty-two, okay. But、yes. that's also really early. And then you、yes. you、uh, apply、yeah. to to different uh, cons- uh, consultancies. Exactly, yes. But and, you had、um, two two uh, two uh, two last experience in that field, so what were the problems? Yes, in a sense, and also、uh, from a personal point of view,、um, I realized that at that point it was not the the right. Right choice, and that I wasn't ready yet.、Um, not from a technical point of view. I think I could have could have managed to do the job as such, but more from a, a maturity point、mm-hmm. of view. You know. So then I actually decided to do a, a social voluntary year、um, at the Stuttgart Chamber Orchestra. So this、um, this was completely different thing. Okay, it was、uh, quite interesting because as a Um, yeah, as a master student, why would you do a voluntary social year?、Uh, it's complete craziness、uh, in a sense.、Uh, but for me, it was exactly the right thing to do. That's so cool! I, I love music. I play also music. What what for an instrument、oh, nice. you played at the chamber orchestra?、Uh, a violin? Yes, so I, I I play myself a violin and viola.、Mm-hmm. Um, I I didn't play there. Um, uh, unfortunately, in the orchestra, it's a very, very good orchestra. So you really have to be a be a professional, which、um, which I'm not.、Uh, I, I'm pretending, but <laughs> it doesn't.、Uh, it's not enough.、Um, so、uh, then I actually worked in the office there. So I was,、uh, you could say, a sort of a,、um, a person doing everything、uh, as well. The, Helping with the organization, helping with uh, contacting um, extra musicians if we needed them for projects,、um, answering emails, answering the phone. I was the first contact person for anybody that、uh, that called.、Um, so th- this was something that was very、um, interesting for me as well. In a sense, quite a challenge. You think, okay, 
the sky you come with a master in uh, theoretical physics everything is going to be easy after that but if you never answer the phone or never really answered email in a setting where you have to answer them very quickly and be polite and all these things uh, Well, it was, was not that easy. Plus, it was all in German, and I, uh, I was a bit um, uh, <laughs> was a bit difficult at the start. Uh, my, I always spoke German at home, but uh, mm -hmm. still, if you live abroad that much, um, some of the things take some time. So it took me a of month course. to really get into it again. Yes. Okay, really interesting. And after that voluntary year, what what was the next step? Yes, so I, I missed I missed science, I missed physics. I realized that very quickly, three months into the into the job there. Um, obviously, at that point, I, I knew um, all the staff there, all the musicians. I, I loved uh, being there and um, yeah, being around this this atmosphere of, of culture and also going to the concerts. But it was uh, from an intellectual point of view. Um, maybe not as, as, as stimulating um, mm -hmm. in a sense, uh, what I was used to, well, not very surprising. Um, so I can, uh, in a sense, only blame myself for this. Um, but um, then I thought, okay, I want to go back. And I thought, okay, what did I like about physics? What field did I like? And uh, I really um, thought that the, the field that I um, most enjoyed was particle physics. And as a, as a theory person, I thought, okay, I want to do another master's in particle physics um, and uh, like get, getting the really the, the right background knowledge then to do a PhD afterwards. And so I went to, to Cambridge. To Cambridge, to, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so the, this master's, it was, um, in, it was a master's in applied mathematics where you really get the mathematical grounding to then be able to apply it in physics um, and um, specifically in um, yeah, particle physics. So after that, uh, I actually didn't go into theoretical particle physics, I went to experimental particle physics. But still, yes, uh, doing, uh, having this theoretical background really helped me to understand uh, what was going on there. And yes, I went uh, to uh, do a PhD at Imperial College in uh, London. And uh, part of this, um, of this PhD was working at CERN and actually also going there. So I was there for nine months. And, and what, uh, what for experiments did you do there? Can you explain yes. it for me? So I'm not that, <laughs> that into, into, into deep physics. <laughs> I can try. Uh, so. There are, um, there are a few experiments at CERN. Um, they're all quite big. Uh, so uh, the, the one I worked at, it was not the biggest one, also not the smallest one. Uh, they're around um, 800 people on this experiment. It's 800 called, uh, people? 800 uh, physicists. A lot um, of persons. And a, exactly. a lot of knowledge. <laughs> a lot of knowledge, yes, for sure. Um, so then you have um, at this experiment, which is called uh, LHCB, um, the Large Hadron Collider Beauty Physics Experiment. There um, I worked on, on an analysis. So this can be seen as maybe a sort of a project or so, um, where you really try to find out about um, one specific question that you want to solve. Um, you use the data that you take with your experiment and you then an analyze this data. That's why it's called uh, analysis. So you, yes. you're data, you were a data scientist, you, you programmed some, some algorithms to match data or something like that. Yes, so data scientist uh, in the broader sense. Uh, yes, I, um, you could say I, I analyzed the data, um, I, um, I also ran some machine learning algorithms, yes, mm -hmm. that is true, um, but uh, I wouldn't have called my position uh, a data scientist, so it was a bit broader than that, okay. uh, really going through the, all, all the different stages of a, partially acquiring the data, then uh, trying to, uh, to sort it out so you can understand something about it, and then uh, try to apply the physics to this data to, to answer in the end the question 
or to test um, the, the current model we have in particle physics, the standard model. Um, and yes, we, we did this and um, we managed to get a very exciting result uh, because uh, we did see a deviation from this um, standard model. Um, so it uh, may be easily explained in terms of statistics is if you would um, make this measurement thousand times, then one out of these thousand times, you would get the result that we got. Okay, okay. So it's very unlikely to happen in case your model is right. Okay. Um, so that's not yet enough in particle physics. Um, we have even bigger numbers in a sense uh, that, that you have to confirm, but it was a hint of, of new physics, um, of physics beyond this uh, the standard model. So maybe a new particle, maybe something else. Um, maybe we don't understand something, but yes, uh, very exciting indeed. Yeah. Were that one of the things you liked being a, a scientist? Yes, yeah, for sure. I mean, this uh, this investigating something that uh, nobody ever did before and um, really probing the, the, the heart of how our world works and what are the what are the building blocks? How do they fit together? That is something fascinating. Yeah, that, that they're fascinating for sure. And I think it, um, if you see how, how it's being portrayed in the news, it does not only fascinate the physicists, but also a lot of people around it. That sounds really great. But, but then uh, a big challenge appeared in your life. Yes. yes. And you decided to go into business again, or the first time. Why first time. Did, you, did you do this, this big step? Yeah. Yes, so when you, when you come towards the end of your PhD, you have, to start, uh, you have to start making this decision and thinking about what um, are the next steps in life? Do I want to uh, continue in research in um, academia and um, do a postdoc, which is the usual step or would have been a natural step for me to take? Um, and then at some point, maybe uh, be able to become either a permanent researcher or um, a professor at, at the university and get a permanent position then. Um, or do I try something completely new, something that I hadn't experienced as such um, and um, may, yeah, comes with its own challenges, exactly. Uh, so in a sense, how, how did I approach this, um, this question? So one of the driving factors was uh, this, this flexibility that you have to show as, um, as a researcher who wants to stay in, in academia. So you really um, need to be able to, to move every two years really for a new postdoc um, position and um, that doesn't constrain you, you, you don't constrain yourself to Europe, for example. It's, it's very good to go to, for example, the United States or um, do somewhere completely different, let's say Singapore or so, um, which is um, all very exciting. Um, but if you know you have to do this every two years, plus you don't have the, um, the security as such to know what will come after. Mm -hmm. You have no idea to, to look forward, then it becomes a challenging question. And um, it was not only my own decision, but also uh, um, the decision of my, um, my wife and me together to see, okay, what, what do we want uh, in life in the end? And um, yes, I, uh, as you saw, I, uh, I'm really burning for uh, for physics and the ideas behind it, um, but I could also envis envisage me doing something different and trying something different. I, I wasn't completely opposed to it. And with this this idea in the background, okay, maybe at some point you want to have um, want to have a family. You want to um, you want to maybe stay at a place for a bit more than than two years. You want to have a bit uh, more security as well. Um, these were all the, the big factors that, that played a role in the end. I said, okay, um, I take this and I asked the same questions about the job in industry. 
and uh, some of these questions were uh, were answered in a similar way others were in a more positive way yes what what were your prejudices about uh, working in business did, did you have mm -hmm. there some yes so it's difficult to say <laughs> because uh, obviously there is not one business or not one company so um, when i started uh, searching i I concentrated mainly on three different um, industries. Uh, one was, was banking, uh, so as a um, physicist, especially coming from CERN, um, it's, uh, yeah, where people really want you to, to work in um, some quantitative roles in banks um, called, called quants. So this was one thing. Another thing, um, data science. Um, where I thought, okay, I bring the right background. This is something Definitely. I should be find the job um, easily, and um, also something that is really going to drive the, the future. And the third one, which I didn't really um, think about too much, but then um, some some people um, um, contacted me, for example, on LinkedIn and Xing. Um, they were telling me, ah, oh, well, maybe you should look into also some. Um, more uh, technical consulting roles um, so yes the, these were the, the three things i looked into and um, the, the the one thing i didn't want is was to get into a company which is extremely political so where it's not uh, not really about the work or not so much about the work but more about um, um, maybe trying to um, impress everybody around you and to maybe talk 80% about what you do and only and do 20% yeah. yeah. of the work in the end, yes. So that, 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 that was not, um, not my ambition. I wanted to really be somewhere where I can be, uh, can be productive and where I'm valued for what I, what I do, yes. Okay, um, that sounds really interesting. And then uh, you get in contact with Hibernian, wasn't it? So? Exactly, yes. Um, yes, so I was, uh, that was one of the, <laughs> uh, one of the companies that, uh, that contacted me, yes. Um, so, so one of the, um, the recruiters there, um, Charlie Heiser, he, he contacted me and um, said, yes, there, there might, be an, uh, might be an opportunity for you. And um, at the start with not so much information, so I was like, okay, well, what is this? So quite curious. <laughs> Took me some days to respond, uh, but then I finally did. And I talked to him and thought, okay, this, this sounds like uh, something um, that, some, yeah, that sounds really good, a uh, really good opportunity. Yeah. Okay, and, and which, which company you choose? Yes, so the, uh, the company that uh, Charlie proposed was uh, App Initial. Mm -hmm. It's a software company based in the US. And um, I was asked to be a, a field consultant. Field yes. consultant? What is, what is this exactly? You're, you're, you're going to, to, to some customers and help them with their software stuff? Or what, what can I understand? Yes. Um, so. Um, yeah, maybe going a little bit to, to the past, okay, I, I said uh, I applied to these big consultancies and um, I realized maybe it wasn't the, the right thing to do at that point and also I didn't apply to them again. Mm -hmm. So when I was first told, okay, field consultant, I was, oh, okay, I'm consulting, I'm not so sure, <laughs> it isn't really the right <laughs> thing. Okay, and then uh, there was the point, yes, it's a technical consulting, so it's a little bit different. Um, and uh, what you do is um, you're part of um, the, the team who acquires new, new clients um, together with, uh, with account managers. Um, then um, you also um, train the people there um, to be able to use your software mm -hmm. at the client side. Um, you, you have to install the whole software at, at the client side. Um, mm -hmm and set everything up, um, so all the different parts that, uh, that work together. And um, on, on top of that, um, you also develop a little bit your own um, uh, software here and there um, in order to be able to, um, for example, fulfill some special wishes or so from 
with the client. Yeah. Okay, that sounds that sounds really interesting. So you started after uh, your, your science job at at Abinicio. Were there some starting difficulties or something like that because you you were new in business? Yes, yes. So I um, I, I was very impressed. I must say um, it, it was extremely um, smooth and nice to start. Um, so the yeah the people working there my colleagues uh, were extremely um, helpful um, and w welcoming so i really had a, had a great start um, it was difficult because uh, it was also during covid so i was only able to go to uh, to the munich office for um, for two weeks and from that moment on was just working from home um, but um, at the same time You, you have all these uh, amazing um, online training courses that you um, can take yourself. So you, you don't need to be at the start uh, so much um, in contact with everybody. Um, it's obviously nice, but it's not a, um, a to have at the, at the start, yes. So uh, th th this was great uh, to just be able to pace yourself a little bit, um, go a little bit quicker on one day, a little bit slow on the other day, uh, depending on, on how, how you did. Um, and then um, I was also uh, introduced to the to the first clients quite quickly. Um, and also there, the, the support has been has been enormous by um, by Abinicio. Um, in a sense, I uh, I was also surprised that um, lots of the uh, the skills I'd learned during my PhD I could apply directly in industry. For example, um, I had to give a presentation every week of uh, showing what. Well, Uh, my work and uh, being able to explain this work to uh, to my colleagues at, at CERN and then I had to give for example a client presentation and uh, also there again it was uh, quite technical so I really had to be able to explain to the client what uh, what I had done and uh, try to assess a little bit okay how, how do they react maybe I have to change a little bit um, be, become a little bit fast a bit slower all these things maybe skip a few slides because they're not uh, of interest any longer and exactly that you also had to do in a, um, in a physics presentation um, so this was uh, yeah but it was very nice to see yes and um, apparently uh, I did all right I got some good uh, feedback and um, so some of the people also seemed a little bit surprised oh well he's a physicist why, why can he why can he present <laughs> Like, okay, yeah, but that, that's part of my life, so... But oh, that's part... perfect, isn't it? So Exactly. There were, um, there were no big difficulties. Everything Not worked? really, okay. until, until now. Um, the, the biggest difficulty, in a sense, is to learn about all the, the new technology and uh, learn about all these... Um, like, get a really good foundation and background knowledge. But on the other hand, uh, who doesn't need that mm -hmm. at the start uh, of a new job? So um, I have the feeling that it's yeah, it's, it's really not a problem. That the transition was uh, was very smooth. Um, obviously, I was very lucky also in in finding this uh, this amazing company and employer. Um, on the other hand um, maybe it would also have been um, completely fine at a different company i don't know i, I cannot compare yes. that is right were there were there any any other scientific skills that helps you uh, during your start in, in business yes so i would uh, say that one thing um, that really helps in in science and also helps a lot when trying to solve um, A difficult problem is that you don't give up and uh, that you just uh, you try very hard to, to solve it yourself and um, if you don't manage yourself then you try to seek help and, and this was especially um, good uh, when working from home because um, I I had learned doing the PhD that the worst thing to do is just uh, not to ask the questions 
and uh, not to uh, try to get to the answer somehow, um, but just do something and then um, hope that it was the right thing to do. And so, so here at the start, when, whenever I had some, um, some issue, I, I tried myself as far as I could um, using the, the resources that were available. Um, but when I got stuck, uh, then I immediately um, seeked uh, seek for help and also this help came back. So th this was uh, the amazing part. Um, and also that's so something that I didn't experience too much uh, during my PhD, because there you're really on your own sometimes and you have to figure it out and uh, there won't be anybody um, who really wants to help. Uh, they, they will help if you push enough. Okay. <laughs> Um, but yes, uh, this, uh, this is something at up initial that uh, when you ask for help, you get help. So your and, coll uh, colleagues helped you a lot? Exactly, yes, yes which uh, I also need, yes, <laughs> at the start, for sure. Are there, yeah. are there some, some other things you, you can learn from your, from your colle uh, colleagues who, who work a, a much longer time than you in, in business? Yes, yeah. Yeah, one of the things is how to how to interact with the the client. With the clients, yeah. um, so if you just, in a sense, interact with um, with engineers, physicists, mathematicians, it's it's a very um, yeah very very smart uh, group of people who are um, extremely um, good, good at what they're doing um, and so on. Uh, but it's also maybe not the, the most varied um, type of people. Um, so you, you can approach them uh, with uh, mostly the, the same attitude, um, also the same level of detail. Um, and um, it's, it is important sometimes to change a little bit how deep you go into, um, into the detail, depending on the presentation and the conference and all these things. But at the same time, your variation is not that much. While with a client, you have a huge amount of uh, different personalities and uh, different kinds of um, background as well. For, for people, there might be somebody who who did um, who studied economics, somebody who studied uh, management, and somebody who has studied physics, um, and another one. Um, law or mm -hmm. so and all these uh, these people will interact in a very different way uh, with you and uh, there's something that um, yeah the, where can really learn from those who have um, who have done this for, for a very long time this um, this interaction and also have seen uh, many different kinds of industries maybe be, because um, I imagine that also with the different types of industries the interactions will be different Yes. You're doing the work as a field consultant. <laughs> exactly. You have to be um, everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> understand everything. Yes. But I think you, you do a great job. Um, so I, I'm, I'm thinking we're now really at, at the end of our interview. Um, so so my, my not not the last que question, but, but one of the, the last questions. Did you regret your step into, into business? Yes, so for now, um, not at all, no. It was really um, the, the right decision, I think, uh, for, for me at that point. Um, one, one never knows how I will feel in, in five years' time, in ten years' time or so. Um, and I have also had a few friends who transitioned to, uh, to industry and do regret the step. Um, whether it's uh, because of um, of them or whether the employer is not uh, not that great and so on, but uh, for me it really has been um, an amazing journey until now, and it will I assume only get better when um, the the pandem pandemic will calm down a little bit, because then you can actually see your colleagues and go to the clients and uh, really have uh, some parts of the of this experience that uh, until now you. You couldn't have, yeah. That makes that makes totally sense. Um, so um, I think now I'm at my last question, and this is a really really open question to you. Um, I ask it in every interview I do, and I do a lot. Do you want anything 
left to say? Is there anything left to say? What what you want uh, to tell to to our uh, to our viewers? Mm -hmm. So I think we we have covered covered quite a lot and probably answered most of the questions that uh, we wanted to. So this is uh, now a, a tricky thing. <laughs> Do I have something something to add? I think. In the end, you can um, you can think about all the different um, different positives and negatives. Uh, you can put a weight on all these things. You can write down matrices and um, discuss with um, as many people as possible. That's all very good to do, and um, I think uh, I, <laughs> I did this myself as well. But in the end, um, with all this information that you have. You cannot put like a mathematical formula to it and say this is the right decision or this is the, the the wrong decision. In the end, you have to, in the moment when you have to to decide, just um, see how you feel. And if it feels right to you, then then do it and try it um, and uh, don't uh, don't regret in the end um, because every experience will help you in the in the future. Do what you love is the. <laughs> Is are the, the the great ending words uh, by Felix Kress. I'm really <laughs> thankful for your time, for your interview, and I Thank wish you. you a lot of luck at your position at Evanishi. Thank you. <laughs>